At a time when much of the aviation industry is wondering how it's even going to pay the utility bills next month, cash is flowing freely into new EVATOL aircraft developers as investors seek a piece of the advanced air mobility action. But is hype clouding the judgment of some investors who may find that the pot of gold at the end of the electric aircraft rainbow is further away than they thought, and perhaps even a much smaller pot than they'd been led to believe? For a reality check, we caught up with industry expert Sergio Chicuta. He's with SMG Consulting, which works with companies across the aerospace, defense, automotive and tech sectors. So how can it make sense that there are supposedly several hundred companies all trying to bring new aircraft to market in just one niche sector of aviation? When it comes to the amount of aircraft in development as far as Vito, we need to look at it a different way. Uh, rather than is there enough money for all of them, well, we should think about is there enough market for all of them and are all of these aircraft viable? So what, what we think is that, uh, no, not all these startups will be, um, will be funded uh, because many of them, it's the famous long tail uh, that will um, naturally disappear as soon as the industry matures. It's also one of the first times in aerospace where you have a very developed investment community out there that is capable and able to invest in these programs. Uh, so maybe, yes, it's a little bit of a gold rush, as in we have an enormous amount of new entrants. But at the same time, it's nothing new to aerospace from the 1910s, 1920s, when you would have hundreds of companies try to develop the first airplanes. And out of those companies were born today's Boeings, today's Lockheed Martins. Uh, but to arrive to today, you have to go back through many, many years of mergers, acquisition and consolidation. And I think this is the same road this industry will follow, probably in a much more accelerated way, because today's world moves a lot faster. With so many horses in the race, it can be confusing for investors to work out what form the runners and riders have and which ones to back. So the first question, the first thing that, uh, that a lot of folks look before um, investing in a startup is the team, uh, the leadership team. And when I say leadership team, it's not just the funders, but the team of folks that they've hired to be the leaders in the different uh, parts of the companies. Um, for example, uh, do they have a strong uh, person looking at production? Do they have an expert looking at certification? Is their engineering uh, pool of talent strong? Uh, and this is all very important. And at the end, we always have to remember, people do not invest in products. Many times they invest in a people. And so even one of the best product, if it is not associated with people that can really explain it, really it finds it very difficult to get to the market. Um, they also look at the technology. And the technology is very important because it's, it's very new. Uh, it is the first time that we have such complex configuration. It will use to be called general aviation because these are small aircraft. Uh, we have in, we have fly-by-wire, we have uh, fluidic controls, uh, for example, with Lilium. Uh, it, it's, it's innovation never seen in, in aircraft of this size and of this price. And, and it's important to see that the technology, not just from a point of view of is it good, but also is it mature. And last but not least, their business plan. Does their business plan make sense? Do they have customers? I think companies that can announce customers build a significant amount of confidence in investors because every customer, especially a big name, it's basically a vote of confidence in the product. But some of the startups say that not only will they build entirely new aircraft in record time, but also that they and they alone will be operating them in new air taxi services in some of the world's busiest cities. That seems like a tall order for companies with no previous experience in commercial aircraft operations. The all operation side of the house requires a set of skills that is extremely different from making an aircraft. Um, so the, the fact that this company wants to operate the aircraft is, is, is an interesting strategy because they're very new aircraft they require a lot of learning at the beginning. And so it is logical that this company want to operate themselves so that they can quickly 
uh, learn and institute any changes, uh, updates in order to make the service better. Uh, but at the same time, there is also this lack of an external validation on, uh, on the platform. Uh, and so some of these companies, for example, are following the route of having customers in the military side of the house. And so in that case, they're getting a validation. It's just not a commercial validation, but that's not uh, an unimportant. It's very important validation as well. Some of the biggest chunks of cash being dropped into the sector are coming via special purpose acquisition companies set up purely for the purposes of taking a fast track to public share flotations on Wall Street. The interest of, of these uh, um, companies uh, of, from Adventure Mobility in SPAC comes from the fact that merging with the SPAC can um, allow them to raise significant amount of capital uh, because many of these companies might have exhausted the other sources of financing, whether it is strategic investors, whether it is seed investors, or whether it is venture capital or private equity. Um, the the beauty of the spec is that the um, it's it's basically a merger, and therefore it is it is a merger slash acquisition. And merger slash acquisition go through a significant less intense scrutiny process than a conventional IPO. Uh, lately, John Coates, that is the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission acting director in the U.S., warned companies. Um, the specs, uh, companies going public through the specs against issuing over-optimistic financial projection. And, and the, the concern is that being public companies, they will have what they call here in the US mom and pop investors investing in securities that might be very risky. Um, and the, also the reason for companies to want to go the spec way is because spec allow for longer range projections than an IPO. Therefore, it allows them to uh, project up to, for example, 2026, as we've seen, the three companies that have announced back, all of their financial are concentrated between 24 and 26. And an IPO would not allow them to project financial all the way to uh, there, nor allow them to project financial that have such a, a, a large rate of growth. The new business models uh, are, are something that is unproven. And, and there was another another question from from the SEC acting director saying um, these are completely new businesses. We do not know how they are going to develop, um, even if at the same time we have to remember that when we talk about advanced air mobility and Evito, we're talking a very, very broad range of vehicles. And for some of them, there might not be an existing demand. But for others, there is an existing demand. And in that case, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about e tall aircraft that are hybrid or electric or cargo aircraft uh, that are either hybrid or electric. There is a growing market. Uh, it's this urban air mobility part of the, of the field that is, is more uncertain for the simple reason that we don't have an equivalent product that exists today we can compare to. And money is also flowing from a mix of venture capitalists, private equity groups, and so-called strategic investors. Venture capitalists are a main source of, of funding for this sector. Um, in fact, the latest statistic says that the latest round of funding for companies involved in the advanced mobility industry, 38% uh, of the funding came from venture capitalists, and it actually goes up to... Um, 48% if you consider um, incubators and accelerators. Um, for as far as um, private equity, private equity, it's different. Um, private equity tends to buy already existing companies uh, and companies that are already um, uh, that already have a product and they're out there in the market. And the second part is private equity usually tends to buy 100% of ownership of a specific company, not just investing. The reason for being called strategic is because these investors not only bring to the table money, but they also bring to the table expertise, expertise in a specific area, expertise in production, expertise in certification. And allow me to give a, a few examples. Um, for example, Boeing participation in WISC 
is a strategic partnership for them. Uh, and in this case, we have seen the announcement of many of the Aurora, uh, that is another Boeing subsidiary, engineers going to work with WISC. And Aurora has always been extremely renowned for um, ed edgy projects, um, very uh, technologically advanced projects, um, as well as already having an evital vehicle they had developed themselves. A new class of strategic investor we've seen interested for the first time, or, or not as often as it has been the case, is automakers. And the reason for automakers to be interested in advanced air mobility is multiple. Number one, they're seeing two trends in their market, electrification and autonomy, that are going to reduce their revenue, both in the aftermarket and in direct sales in the long term. And so they are refashioning themselves as mobility company that not just provide cars or trucks, but their mobility company that provides solution for mobility to their customers. And one of these solutions could be eVTOLs. So we've seen um, different ways for this company to participate. We've seen a Hyundai, for example, directly creating a company, uh, this Hyundai Air Mobility, um, but we've also seen strategic investment, like, for example, Toyota, where Toyota invests a significant amount of money in Joby, but it's not only the money. Toyota is the brains and the bronze behind the production of the Joby aircraft, and basically they are um, uh, teaching the Joby as a company one of the best production systems in the industrial world. Fine. But how can a company that's never built an airplane before and didn't even exist two years ago suddenly be worth billions of dollars? We have seen an, an enormous wave of interest in electrification in industrial products. And this is electrification, especially in vehicles, where you've seen an enormous amount of startups coming in, has also moved on to electrification in aerospace. And so some of these companies have benefited from this wave of interest that has uh, created this high valuation. Uh, when it comes to the valuation, the, we can say that the future will tell if this valuation match the worth of the companies, uh, but it's not something that today we can really uh, uh, speculate on. The hype is a good thing because it brings attention and it brings the attention also of the capital to the industry. Now, uh, we, with, with visibility comes also bad things, and is increased scrutiny. And this increased scrutiny is going to be there uh, for the future. And what I'm looking at is especially the year of 23 and 24, when a lot of these companies have promised to certify and enter service. And, and I think that is where the famous rubber will meet the road, and it will prove if this, call it, excitement of today as, as real legs in the future. As countless aerospace firms have found over the years, it often costs more than they anticipated to bring new aircraft to market. So is there a danger that the newcomers may have bitten off more than they can chew? We uh, have seen in the industry the, uh, the number, the figure of $1 billion used to say this is how much it takes to carry an aircraft to production. And when we come in, when talking about production, we're talking about a somewhat uh, low rate production. So we're not talking about production in the thousand that might need additional capital resources. Uh, however, when it comes to this, we need to be very clear that it is a different amount of money according to which one is the vehicle, as well as which one is the company supply strength strategy for the vehicle. So for example, a multi-copter is going by definition to be less expensive to certify and bring to production than aircraft that are more complex like uh, vector trust or lift plus trust configuration. At the same time, it is also very important to see their supply chain strategy. Some companies have decided on, uh, on pure vertical integration and therefore wanted to do everything in-house. They need much more uh, funds for both development and certification. Some other companies have instead chosen the most common aerospace route of bringing in risk reduction participating suppliers that are not only reducing the risk, but are also taking on some of these non-recurring engineering costs as well as certification costs, and therefore reducing significantly the number. And so we will see companies that will need a billion to go to certification. We will see other companies that will need 250, 300 million 
million dollars to get to the same point, but they have chosen a different strategy. So I think we can characterize Sergio's perspective on this exciting new sector of aviation as being cautious optimism. He sees the promise of what new technologies could bring to the market, but also plenty of possible pitfalls too. He told me that the Security and Exchange Commission filing for one of the SPAC-backed Evitol companies ran to 666 pages. That's right, 666. So buyer beware, he cautioned, because the devil is in the detail. AIN's new FutureFlight.Aero platform is drilling down into this detail to make sense of the new aviation technologies and business models. We're posting fresh news day by day. Subscribers get access to exclusive stories about what's happening throughout the industry and also to our extensive database of new aircraft programs and the companies behind them. You can subscribe for free to our weekly newsletter, which brings you highlights from the Future Flight world every Thursday. We'll be posting more of these videos explaining the context for advanced air mobility. So thanks for watching this one and please do find more of our coverage at futureflight.aero.com.